Ryan Poles has signed his first extension as the Chicago Bears general manager, and it is for Cole Komet as they have locked up the young tight end on a four-year, $50 million extension to remain in Chicago for the foreseeable future. Welcome to Bears Now. My name is Harrison Graham. Let's react to the news here of Cole Komet sticking in Chicago. I want to give credit to Adam Schefter, who broke this signing, although I do want to also mention Brad Spielberger in a sec. Schefter had the details, four years, $50 million, including $32.8 million guaranteed and $20 million in new first-year cash uh, for him and Field Yates. Uh, my instant reaction is I love getting this deal done. The reason I wanted to shout out Brad Spielberger is he kind of dropped an eye emoji about 10 minutes before Schefter tweeted this. He's kind of connected to the Bears. I think he may have known something, PFF cap guy, but... Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of this. Ryan Poles was asked after the season last year, after a 3-14 and season, who is a player on this team right now that feels like a cornerstone piece moving forward? You know who the one player he mentioned was? Cole Komet. So it kind of felt like it was going in this direction when Evan Ingram signed his deal, uh, what, a week or two ago. Uh, he kind of felt like this deal could happen as well. I like getting it done here on the first day of training camp, full speed ahead in the 2023 NFL season. More reaction to come, but I want to hear from you guys. Weigh in down in the comment section below. What is your one word reaction to Cole Komet's contract extension? If you had one word, let me know what that word is. My one word would be solid, and it's because Cole Komet is a solid player that's still improving. He's only 24 years old. It's kind of crazy to think about. When they drafted him, he was 21. He's already played three years in the NFL and uh, just turned 24 in March, and he's gotten better each and every year. Technically, his catches and yards were a tick down last year from the year before, but you got to remember, the passing game as a whole was just bad, to be honest, last year, but he had seven touchdowns. He improved tremendously as a blocker. You see the rise in play. Poles recognized it. This coaching staff recognized it. Him and Justin Fields have good rapport. They've been tight ever since Fields got drafted in 2021. And when you think about this offense, too, this is an offense that's going to run a lot of two tight end sets. So keeping Cole Komet long term was always something that was going to make sense for the Chicago Bears because yes you signed Robert Tanya and that's just a one-year deal for this year but Komet who was set to be a free agent after this year like you can't enter the offseason with nothing at tight end next year like I just don't think that's a solution so you lock up Komet here uh, you keep him for the foreseeable future we know Luke Getze likes to use two tight ends a lot that's why they bring in uh, Robert Tanya but now you've kind of got a face of the position for the foreseeable future which I think is a very good thing. He's a leader on this team as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he was voted a team captain this year. So uh, exciting times, and uh, I think it was critical for Poles to get one of these extension done, extensions done here as camp gets underway uh, just to kind of send that positive message. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to go live here in a little bit with more analysis to the Cole Komet extension, but also uh, training camp day one. We're going to have uh, news and notes from practice today. They're practicing right now probably wrapping up soon they've been out there for about an hour and a half as we've been filming this so hit that sub button turn on notifications we're going to have you guys covered here on bears now live show here in a little bit and also i just had a thought so cole Komet gets this extension right and here are the contract details they're in the middle of practice when this gets announced like this does, did he know going into practice that this deal was happening? Does does Ryan Poles run onto the practice field and be like, hey, man, uh, we need you to step into the office for a little bit. Here's uh, here's your four-year $50 million offer. We just need you to sign on the dotted line. Uh, I'm always fascinated by how those things happen when they're literally in the middle of workouts. But he gets $32.5 million guaranteed, average of $12.5 million. And on the surface, you're probably thinking, Man, that's a big deal, right? And it is. Like, this is a big contract. It's a sizable deal uh, for uh, Ryan Pohl's first extension that he is committed to. But we talked about this when Evan Ingram got his deal. When you look at his three years, $41.25 million, average of $13.75 million and 24 guaranteed, I was like, okay, Cole Komet's going to get a healthy contract. $1.25 million less per year. Yes, he gets more guaranteed, eight more, 8.5 uh, more uh, guaranteed. But it's an extra year, uh, three versus four years. Uh, I think that AAV, that average annual salary being less than Evan Ingram is pretty notable because he's younger than Ingram. And I think he's a better all-around tight end than Ingram. The chatter around Ingram going into last year was, 
Ah, he drops a lot of passes. He doesn't block. He's kind of a headache. Sure, he had a good year in Jacksonville last year, but when you compare their past two seasons, like it's very compar comparable uh, in terms of receiving numbers. And Komet's the better blocker. That's not even a question. Like he can be an asset in the running game where Ingram doesn't really provide a ton of that. So I think it feels right on the money, but it's also a pretty good deal uh, from Chicago's stand uh, point of things. Obviously, it's good for Komet. He gets over thirty million guaranteed. Uh, he and his family are set for life. But then when you take it a step further, and you're like, how good is this deal actually? Well, he's now tied for tenth there with Henry and Jonu Smith is the highest paid tight end in the NFL in terms of average annual value. Obviously, that Smith deal didn't work out that well in New England, but he gets less than Ingram. He gets less than Njoku. He gets less than Dawson Knox. He gets less than Hunter Henry uh, as well. Like, he could have made a strong argument that he should make more than Evan Ingram, and he's making $1.25 million less. I think the compromise there is obviously the guaranteed money. That's typically what these things come down to is they want to know how much money is going into their bank account, right? And uh, Komet obviously topped him there, but I think that's earned. I, I think he's uh, he's proven to be worth that, and he's still ascending. Like, he's 24 years old. He should not be close to a finished product. I think there's a chance at some point that Cole Komet's a top five tight end in this league. I don't think he'll ever be top two or three. He's not that explosive as a receiver, but he showed last year he can be a big-time weapon with seven touchdowns and a much-improved blocker as well. Grade the Cole Komet contract extension when you put all the numbers together, when you compare it to other tight ends who have gotten paid. A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and grade the Komet extension right now. I'll give it an A-. minus. I think it's a good deal. I'm glad it's done before the season. Now, earlier this morning, the Bears made another roster move. They signed offensive lineman Aviante Collins uh, and waived uh, Lawrence Metz uh, in a corresponding move. Obviously, sign somebody, got to cut somebody if your roster is full, which the Bears is on the 90-man roster right now. A little background on who Aviante Collins is. Actually went to my uh, alma mater, TCU. We were actually there at the same time, kind of weird looking at that. Uh, right in front of me now. 2017 Vikings UDFA. Uh, he's played in seven games over you know, his five or six year career where he's bounced around a bit, started one game. Uh, has positional flexibility, can play some guard, can play some tackle. He's 30 years old now. In all reality, this is a camp body, a depth signing. Um, he was active for two games last year with Dallas. So, uh, you know, he's kind of been the classic practice squad guy call up on game day if there's an injury, right? Like, that that's kind of been his career, but he's found a way to stick around, uh, you know, up into his age 30 season now. So we'll see. Uh, I think something that uh, is intriguing to me about the Bears' offensive line is – the starting five you feel better about. I don't think it's an elite group by any means, but it should be much improved based on what they've had in the prior seasons. You get the Nate Davis addition at right guard. You get Darnell Wright at right tackle in the draft, who Ryan Poles has raved about uh, over the past couple of days as well, both at the press conference and in a separate interview he did. But the depth is still a question for me. So I think Poles is going to continue to tinker with this 90-man roster and mix and match on the offensive line and see if he can find a couple guys. I think they are somewhat high on Jatiri Carter. Obviously, Lucas Patrick is a vet. They're going to keep him. But swing tackle spot is still very much a question mark. Could Collins compete for that? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I definitely think the Bears are going to look to increase the competition there, and I think this move is a part of that. All right, guys, appreciate you for tuning in. Big news of Cole Komet getting that four-year, $50 million extension. Congrats to him. Again, we're going to be live in a little bit. It's right now uh, 11.39 Central time as we're wrapping up this video, so maybe 1 o'clock Central. We'll see. We want to get the practice notes uh, and everything that comes out of that first, so stay tuned. Turn on your notifications so you know exactly when we go live. Thank you.